Hello everyone, my name is Christina and I'm a second year medical student studying at Newcastle University and if this is your first time watching one of my videos, thank you so much for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about some of the hot topics that I think are going to be coming up in this year's MMIs, which are multiple mini interviews for medicine. This is a disclaimer, every year the medic portal, student, the student room, different websites and people on YouTube will say different things that they think are going to come up in interviews. We can't guarantee what's going to come up because that's completely up to medical schools but you can kind of like have an idea and predict what might come up based on what's in the news and what kind of medical things are happening at the moment. So I'm not guaranteeing that any of this will come up in your interviews but it's very important that you're definitely prepared and have an idea of all the different topics that could come up just to make sure that you're prepared for literally any topic that could come up. So starting off with the number one um, key topic that I definitely think will come up this year is coronavirus. So this is a topic that literally affected everyone so that's why I think it's definitely something that could come up. Although I do have a theory that because it affected literally everyone, they know that every single student is going to prepare for this answer so they might not ask any questions on this. Regardless though, it's important that you guys are prepared for everything. So here's a few things to consider on this topic and how to answer some questions in your interviews. For example, they could ask you how the NHS coped, they could ask you the impact they had on the NHS, they could ask you about the skills that doctors demonstrated to work during the pandemic. Um, so yeah, those are things that definitely that you should definitely have a think about. Um, I'd also say with coronavirus, there's a number of things that you kind of want to um, have an understanding of, like just going into your interview. So I'll give you guys a quick rundown. Number one, it's a deadly disease that we don't currently have a treatment or vaccine for. There are some treatments which are given to some people, but there's not like a solid treatment which we give absolutely everyone with the disease. Number two is it can affect literally everyone, but there are certain demographics who are at greater risk. For example, people with um, immunocompromised um, immune systems, so people on chemo and stuff like that, people who have had lung transplants, as well as people who are a bit older. Another thing is it spreads via droplets. That's why things like wearing face masks and like um, washing your hands helps to reduce the spread. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of examples of like some questions with like model answers to give you guys an idea of how you wanna be thinking about answering these questions. So for coronavirus they could ask you how did COVID-19 affect the NHS? I think a good way to answer this question would be to say something like um, the NHS was under a lot of pressure and had to treat a bunch of patients especially with staff shortages. The NHS was under a lot of pressure having to treat patients especially during the pandemic with um, staff shortages in addition to having to treat people with like routine medical problems for example heart attacks, routine surgeries and stuff like that. It also had an impact on mental health services because a lot of people did struggle during lockdown so I think in this answer you kind of want to touch on all different things you want to touch on the staff shortages you want to touch on um if you can like having dedicated covid wards that was a struggle especially because it's always an issue to have enough beds for everyone in the NHS and I think you definitely want to mention um, having to manage like routine surgeries like heart attacks and stuff like that that was definitely a struggle and I saw this really interesting question on the medic board if you were health secretary what additional services would you put into play to increase awareness and reduce the spread of COVID-19 in the UK this is a great question and I can imagine them asking people this how I would answer this would be to go down the route of saying things like um, I think what they already did genuinely was great um, you know I saw lots of adverts for coronavirus on billboards mm -hmm. on the radio on tv and stuff like that i think that's great to raise awareness as to how important it is and how serious the disease is but i have noticed that people are starting to like um as i'd say like experience fatigue like not as many people are socially distancing not as many people are washing their hands as frequently and wearing face masks so i think a good way to remind people to do that especially right now approaching the winter crisis out there to try and like remind people of how serious the disease is so maybe include statistics and facts on how many people are sadly dying from this disease or how quickly the disease spreads how fatal it can be and stuff like that i think to remind people of the fact that this disease isn't like a joke it's really really serious and we do need to take it seriously i'll include a bunch of links to more resources where you can get more information on this i think coronavirus is definitely a topic that you guys want to kind of read around because it could come up in your interviews i'm kind of thinking that because it's such a big topic that they might not ask about it at all because literally everyone would have prepared for it but i'd say play it safe and before your interview you definitely want to have a read up of the facts and figures the number of um you know daily cases daily deaths and stuff like that where we are right now you know, um, might change when you have your interview so definitely kind of read up close to the time another thing that could definitely come up is brexit now brexit has kind of been like swept under the rug and people have forgotten about it because of the whole coronavirus and pandemic thing um which i completely understand but they could still very much ask you about this i remember at my interview in 2019 um i didn't get any questions about brexit so i feel like maybe it skipped a year maybe it skipped my year and 
the year before and maybe it'll be a big thing in your year in 2021 so yeah it's worth definitely like reading up on this topic as well some things i wanted to mention has been like a few years since the referendum but we have officially left the eu i think that was 31st of january this year so it's been almost a year so i think with that new landmark of like officially leaving they might ask you guys some questions on this so here's an example of a question that they might ask um do you think brexit is a good idea for the nhs with any questions like this where it's like heavily opinion loaded and you could definitely go down the route of having like just sharing your opinion you really want to be balanced so you really want to give like a yes and no or a pros and cons so with this one you could kind of say um well no a lot of immigrants do work in the nhs and um within the eu the nhs does have access to a lots of different medicines at a low cost which we do rely on to make sure that we can keep the nhs free and just um yeah completely free to access to anyone and on top of that science and research is heavily funded by the eu so to make sure that we're constantly improving our treatments and the way that we approach healthcare we do rely on the eu quite heavily to make sure that they can fund us in terms of yes to is brexit good for the nhs i actually struggle to find some answers so if you guys have any ideas comment down below um you definitely do want to be balanced it's unfortunate that i can't be balanced right now but i'll give you guys a couple of examples of questions where you can be balanced later on in the public health section but with any of these questions you really don't want to just focus on your opinions you really want to have like some facts to back it up so that in your interview you can kind of um say 10 percent of people blah 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 or you know one in five people blah 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 just because it shows that you've done your research and it shows that you're um just a well-read person so the last section public health this is a topic that didn't come up much in my interviews again so i think it could come up more in this year public health just means that um, we're encouraging people to live healthier lives so you'll see a lot of adverts for change for life or the anti-smoking campaigns and stuff like that those are things those are public health campaigns starting off with anti-smoking there are a couple of questions they could ask around this topic for example should smokers have to pay for their lung transplants again this is a very heavily opinion loaded question but you guys want to try and be balanced have a yes and no have a pros and cons so for this you could kind of say yes because it encourages people to stop smoking if they know that they're going to have to pay for the consequence later down the line but on the other hand no because people from low socioeconomic backgrounds might not be able to afford lung transplants and that means that we're just basically saying that um healthcare is only available to people who can afford it which isn't fair and that's not what the initiative stands for moving on to weight loss campaigns you guys might not have seen but a couple of years ago there was a very controversial advert by cancer research uk and it was a weight loss campaign i'll put a picture up on the screen they could ask you guys about whether or not this advert was a good idea or whether or not it was a good choice and what your thoughts are on it again you want to be balanced um so you could kind of say well i think these adverts are good because smoking is one of the most well-known um causes of cancer but not many people know about the fact that obesity is a big cause of cancer as well so i guess this just reminds people of how serious it is and it's one of the um it's one of the causes of cancer that you can actually change and try and improve similar to smoking you can kind of quit smoking with obesity you can try and live a healthier lifestyle so reminding people of this encourages them to just live healthier lifestyles to avoid getting cancer later on in life um, but then on the other hand you could say things like it's unfair to compare obesity to smoking because some people are obese for disease or illness um related issues i know that there are a number of diseases that cause you to gain weight so you could kind of mention those it could also be classed as fat shaming to try and tell people to lose weight um, even though it's to do with health reasons fat shaming does kind of impact your mental health so you would kind of touch on that as well with all of these questions there's no right or wrong answer you really just want to use your knowledge of the nhs and use the four pillars of medicine um, or medical ethics to try and back up your answers as well mental health is also a really big topic at the moment i'm glad that it's being talked about more and more i've noticed that in interviews it doesn't come up that much but it might come up this year for you guys something that they could ask you guys is along the lines of what are the current problems with mental health services in the uk you could kind of research this closer to the time because there might be newer things or um more recent things happening at the moment at the time of filming um funding is almost always being cut for mental health services meaning you have longer waiting times to get the help that you need and not everyone is getting the help that they need you could also say something like um certain areas in the uk get better funding than others meaning that some areas of the uk have really great mental health services and people access that perfectly fine and then other areas which maybe are more deprived people really struggle to access to so it's pretty much created like a postcode lottery if you guys don't know what a postcode lottery is that might come up in your interviews it's pretty much where different areas of the uk get different levels of funding which means that different areas have um, better or worse healthcare services depending on how much funding they get so it's kind of like it's a lottery based on how good your healthcare will be depending on your postcode vaccination this is another big topic i definitely think this will come up because anti-vaxxers anti-vaxxers become so popular recently 
a really simple and straightforward question that could come up is um, do you think vaccination should be compulsory in the NHS? Again, we want to be balanced. We want to show that we can have a balanced argument and that we can fight for or against pretty much anything. And we want to show that we can have, um, you know, we don't let our opinions dominate trying to answer a question. We can actually have a balanced view and be a bit more logical. So with this, you could say, yes, I think they should be compulsory because um, herd immunity is really important. It protects everyone in the country from getting diseases that are curable. Um, you could also kind of use the argument that, you know, anti-vaxxers are quite scared of like side effects and stuff, but that's quite rare. It's literally less than 0.01% of people that get the side effects from vaccinations. So um, it's very rare that it will affect like majority of people. You could also say that giving everyone a vaccination acts in accordance with the uh, beneficence and non-maleficence pillars of medical ethics, which just means that it's doing good to everyone. It's making sure that we're all healthy and well. In terms of like the no side of this argument, you could say that you're kind of giving, you're not giving patients the freedom of autonomy. Autonomy just means that you have the right to decide what treatment, what vaccinations you want to have. If you're forcing everyone to have it, you're not giving patients like the decision to decide what they want to have. Regardless of whether it's beneficial to give someone a vaccination, it is their decision to decide whether or not they want it. And doctors and healthcare professionals do have to respect this argument. So hopefully that showed you guys an idea of how to have a balanced argument. Um, if you have a strong opinion on this, definitely express that to an extent. You don't want it to come across like um, you only are able to fight for one argument. Medical schools and admissions teams, they want to know that you're able to have like a balanced view. And to finish off this video, I just wanted to give you guys some notes on public health topics and public health campaigns. Public health campaigns are pretty much here to safeguard the NHS. Um, the NHS spends a lot of money curing people and treating problems which can be fixed. For example, um, you know, we spend a bunch of money on lung transplants and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, if we spend some money on campaigns to stop people from smoking, that would save us a lot of money. Um, so that's kind of what the purpose of them is for. I think that might, understanding that might help with um, answering these questions. They're here to protect the NHS and to help save us money in the long run. They also make sure that we kind of aim to um, prevent diseases rather than cure them. Um, preventing something from happening is a lot quicker and cheaper than actually like solving the problem at the end. For example, um, if a bunch of people who were say obese were to lose weight and live healthier lifestyles, the NHS would save a considerable amount of money on treating people with heart attacks, um, kidney disease, hypertension, diabetes and stuff like that. So that's kind of the aim of public health campaigns. Having a balanced view is absolutely crucial. It shows that you've got empathy, it shows that you're logical and it shows that you're just intelligent enough to have a balanced view rather than just fighting for one side and letting like your opinion kind of dominate. With most of these questions and points of view, um, genuinely in your interview there is no right or wrong answer. So don't worry too much about having um, one you know, if you if you kind of agree more with yes, that's okay, and you can say that. You know, I'm leaning more towards the yes side of this argument, but um, just make sure you have a balanced view. That's what's most important. Okay, that is the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's any other interview-related videos that you would like to watch. Um, I'm making another medicine video on uh, just general tips for your MMIs, especially if they're going to be virtual, because I know some uh, interviews are going to be online this year. And yeah, let me know what you want to see. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.